Avatar the Last <coughs> Cody. Avatar the Last Airbender is one of the best cartoons to come out in the early 2000s, so it's no surprise that I became a victim of the live action trend that's been going on for a while now. After the movie that shall not be named, fans have been wanting anything to replace the absolute disaster of a film. With One Piece's live action being actually good, I was really excited and looking forward to this release and couldn't wait. I quickly came out though when Tour the Post came out and they made so much changes and the way they worded it just made it sound terrible. It didn't even help that the original writers left the project, but I still had a little bit of hope. The bending in the trailer looked really great and the cast was almost perfect. They had a great setup but they did dunk it. Hey my cool cats and fine feelings, today I'm going to be giving my opinions on the Avatar The Last Airbender's Netflix adaptation. Spoilers ahead so head on to Netflix and give it a watch yourself, however if you don't care, feel free to stay because I have a lot to say. There is no debate if I say that Avatar The Last Airbender is one of the best written cartoons to come out in history. And if anyone disagrees, <laughs> they're wrong. For a children's cartoon, it gives us the perfect mix of goofy comedy and serious moments. It was goofy and fun enough for the kids to enjoy, while also being compelling and interesting enough that dads and Bima would enjoy as well. The live action on the other hand was something. It wasn't bad, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't necessarily good either. It had its highs and then it had its rock bottom lows. At first I absolutely hated it and genuinely had to remove my bias before even reviewing this because I was so quick and ready to rate this at a 3 out of 10. It took me some time to actually remove my bias of the original series and actually like take my time and appreciate it for what it was. So removing my bias, the first two episodes are actually good, then the middle episodes were a bit eh, then episode 5 was just awful and episode 6 was actually my favourite episode out of all of them. Then 7 and 8 were okay and watchable, but it didn't deliver as it should. They shifted the tone around and sometimes it made the scenes better or it completely killed the scene completely. Consistency is one of the main issues with this, varying across multiple points. Also I just want to point out here, I don't care what anybody says, Aang is flying. This man is ascending here and I Alright, be be before I pop a blood vessel, let's start with the positive first. As I stated before, the bending is actually very greatly animated and choreographed. You can even feel the grit from the earth bending, the fluidity of the water bending, the intensity of the fire bending and the flow of the air bending. Since the show went for a more realistic approach, we actually get to see how destructive fire bending can be. Well, as much as they can show. <laughs> we get to see actual burns on people and people being burnt alive. While I may not exactly like the new tone they're going for, I can understand and appreciate the effort to try and be original, but still trying to be faithful to the source material. And on that note, parents, I would think twice before letting your children watch this, despite its predecessor because it's very much more teen to adult. It really shows that they were trying to win over the Game of Thrones fans a lot, which in my opinion doesn't make sense, but hey, we're, we're sticking to the good here, we're sticking to the good. Another thing that I liked was that they included a lot more about the past avatars and made them more prevalent. Since on the day of this recording, I know they're going to have a season 2 and 3. I don't like that they made it so early, but nonetheless, I like that they included them a bit more. By far, my favorite scene is when Kiyoshi came down like a damn chad and was out there bending all the elements around and beating Zhao and Zuko's teams just effortlessly. Speaking of Zuko, the foundation was genuinely done well. You get to see the actual inner workings and the military prowess of the Fire Nation. They aren't just some lackeys to beat off, they actually feel like a threat. And the characters from the Fire Nation I believe are the most thought out. The scene with Iroh and Zuko's relationship and they actually like emphasize on the desperate, the desperate, the how desperate Zuko actually is to just capture the avatar to reclaim his honor. And we get to see how passionate Zuko is at Luten's funeral and how he expresses to Iroh that he loved Luten like an older brother. He actually felt like a mentor to him and he should be proud. The castle was just a more realistic version of the characters. While at times it feels odd, it just genuinely feels more real. And despite how they worded it, the characters do at their age. 
Aang is very serious at times, but they do act like children. The last couple of things I enjoyed during this was the music, they actually like was an homage to the original soundtrack, then the architecture and the very obvious easter eggs like <laughs> Hey, if you haven't already, consider subscribing, it's free and lets you know when I upload. On to the not so great, or even don't rate terrible, I want to talk about the biggest issue, the writing. The writing. Oh, the writing. The best written episodes, in my opinion, were both episode 1 and episode 6, which were my favorites and just so happened to be written by the original creators of Avatar. Coincidence? I think not! Everything else was just a mismatched mess. I just want to make it clear, the actors did the best they could with the script they were given, mostly talking about the child actors who are new to this. The adults did great actually. I think the children just need a bit more practice before I could call their acting good. It was alright at best, but none of that matters if the actual script that they were given is actual act. <gasps> For this, I don't judge the dialogue too much, but my gosh man, the way some of these episodes are orchestrated was just so jumbled and confusing. And because of said bad writing, it undermines or takes away the original purpose for certain scenes in the original. For example, in season 2, episode 2 of the original series, I and Katara and Sokka have to go through this secret tunnel to get into Omashu, while inside Sokka is split off from Aang and Katara and is stuck with the hippies. The way Aang and Katara got out was by their loss of light and having the glowing crystals show the way and paint it in a way that you have to let love show the way. They show this in the live action but completely toss it to the side and make Sokka look foolish. It completely takes away the whole point of the whole lore of the secret tunnel and about Omashu's backstory. There was also a repeating theme of merging three plot lines from episodes of the original to make a cohesive story which was a double edged sword. At some points it would work, but for most of it, it made the live action feel very confusing and jumbled. The best example of this is episode 5, Spirited Away. This episode was a fusion of both the Winter Solstice episodes and the Siege of the North Pole, with the inclusion of Code of Face Stealer. And what annoys me the most is if you're going to add a character from the original, at least keep it the same way as the original, it's called the face stealer. No one tells Aang or any of the characters that they have to keep a straight face around him otherwise he will steal their face. So guess what, they all show their faces with a lot of expression in front of Ko and well for the sake of plot he doesn't steal their face. It upsets me because this isn't how the character works. Show expression he takes their face, that's just how it works. And then they have the goal to still show that oh he is a fear stealer, he stole the face of Kuruk's wife and all that. Why you put him in there if you're not gonna use him properly? I get the whole extra plot line, but it wasn't needed. The whole spirit world thing is just a jumble mess. The plot of the episode starts with the crew arriving at the village that has their people abducted by the panda monster spirit. Aang crosses over into the spirit world, somehow bringing Katara and Saka along with them. And the owl from the library was there too, it was just a whole mess. And Ko uses Genjutsu to capture Katara and Sokka, using their worst memories and FNAF jump scaring them. Now it's up to Aang to rescue them. He now has to meet Roku because Roku knows how to beat Ko somehow. Aang leaves the spirit world and does the acorn thing like he did in the original, before setting off to meet Roku at his statue. I wish they had him speak to the spirit and see it transform into the panda form to show it understood him because this scene feels more like it had to be there and didn't hit as hard as it should. Well with the episodes in Omashu, the plots they admit kind of fit but at times it can feel rushed and almost isolated. In episode 3, they mix the King of Omashu, Jet and the Northern Air Temple plotlines. In this one, Aang meets the Mechanist's son thinking he's an airbender. At first, ultimately leading to the gang finding out that the mechanist is working for the Fire Nation, and Aang urges to help him out. This story, while it was easier to follow, it split up the cast a lot. Sokka would be the mechanist, Aang was with the sun, and Katara was with Jet. They do this throughout the series, so there are rarely moments of them actually forming relationships, so when we do get them, they feel dry or forced. Finally, it comes to the characters themselves. As I stated earlier, I believe they did a good job with most of the Fire Nation characters, 
fantastically developing them, sticking to the source, and expanding off of them. Everyone else was mediocre or okay. Aang was alright, but it did feel like he was reading straight from the script at times. I also want to point out that while I did say they act like kids, Aang is still very serious and doesn't initiate any fun for the sake of fun, which ruined the character and just didn't make him feel like Aang. Katara was not the loud assertive girl I know her for, which ultimately made her feel flat and boring to watch half the time. Sokka's jokes never landed for me personally. It felt more like he was imitating Sokka more than the character feeling like another Sokka. So again, this character fell flat. I'm hoping they only made Azula this different for her to be herself in the second season because this is not the Azula I know. Azula is so sure everything will go her way that it is when things stop going her way that she goes crazy. You mean it's not obvious yet? I am about to celebrate becoming an only child! Bumi being bitter absolutely ruined the character for me. He's supposed to be kooky and fun, not bitter and angry. I was just watching the scenes and I was like, what, what are they doing with the character? It, this out of all the characters, this one upset me the most. I understand that people are supposed to be sad and bitter because it's war and Aang is supposed to feel like the new hope again, but completely doing a 180 with this character was not it for me at all. Yue and Suki felt rushed, but I did like Suki more in this. Taking away Sokka getting humbled by her took away the fun and the depth to both these characters. Yue also being the fox spirit was odd, but I don't know how to feel about it so I won't say anything about it. But all in all, no matter what I keep saying about the wrongs they did with the characters, it's all still going to come down to the writing. But did it make the live action bad? No, though I didn't make it good either. It's a complicated mess of the original series, but it's a million times better than the movie that will not be named. Do we need a season 2 or a 3? I don't think so, because we didn't need a live action in the first place. I personally would have just preferred them reanimate the original like what Naruto is supposed to be doing, but I want to see a season 2. The actors will have had practice and hopefully the directors are taking feedback from the fans to make the series better than before. My rating of this is 5 out of 10 or 5.5 out of 10 at best. This series is not god awful but it isn't good either. It is the true definition of mid. But this is still the best live action adaptation we have for this series and it is not as terrible as Twitter wants you to believe. So before joining the bandwagon, check it out for yourself and then make your own opinions. And with that being said, this is your buddy Bolt and I'm clocking out. Thank you for watching my 10 minute rant. If you think I misjudged something, let me know in the comments. If you like what you watch, don't forget to subscribe for more.